in this topic, we'll discuss the what is cytoskeleton, what are its various functions, the varieties of the uh, fibers which form the cytoskeleton, the characteristics and the structure of each type of the fiber that forms the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is a lattice or an internal framework of a cell which is composed of the proteins, the filaments and the microtubules in the cytoplasm. It performs various functions that it gives the shape to the cell, it protects the cell and enables the cell in uh, various motions and provides itself with the mechanical support, forms its framework and helps in the cell motility. There are three varieties of the cytoskeleton, the microtubules, the microfilaments and the intermediate filaments. Now you can see in the cell, the identify the three structures, the microtubules, the intermediate filaments and the microfilaments. Now these in a cell, they form the framework of the uh, or the uh, skeleton of the cell also and they also form the various structures like the flagella, the cilia, the centrioles which performs the various functions and we'll discuss them each uh, later on. So the cytoskeleton is needed by the cell to create its shape, change its shape and allow its movement. Now this is a schematic diagram to make you understand that what is a cytoskeleton. So if you can imagine the cell, it has a roof and a floor and inside the like a building material they are formed of the framework is formed by the various type of the fibers of the cytoskeleton. Now you can identify these blue ones as the microtubules. So they are the rod like structures and <clears throat> they are forming the framework. Then these intermediate filaments which uh, give the contractility to the cell and changes its shape. And then they are the thinnest fibers, the microfilaments. Uh, which also performs the various functions. Now you can see here the microfilaments, they are the thin filaments and they are made up of the actin filaments which are wind round together in a double helix manner. These intermediate filaments, they are made up of the various type of the proteins and they are thread-like uh, fibers. Whereas these microtubules, they are the hollow tubes which are made up of the protein, the tubulin diamers. So we'll discuss the each type of the filament, the microfilaments. So microfilaments, they are the thinnest filaments and present in the cytoskeleton of the cytoplasm of the, all the eukaryotic cells. They give the cell its shape and enables the cell in movement. Now you can see this uh, a, a structural assembly of the microfilaments. So microfilaments, they are made up of the actin uh, filaments or the actin proteins. Now this actin protein has the two subunits that is the globular actin which we call as a G actin and the uh, F actins which are called the filamentous actins which are called the F actins. So these subunits of the actin molecules or the actin proteins they are polymerized in a manner that they form a double helix structure and all the globular heads they become uh, uh, assembled in on one side and the F actins or the filamentous actins, they are assembled on the other ends so that the other materials, they can be attached to this filamentous actin or the F actins. So you can see here the electron microscopic image of the microfilament that is the actin filament. 
and this is a diagrammatic representation showing you the globular actins only and you can see that the, when it is assembled with along with the filamentous actin it forms a double helix structure so that all the globular heads or the globular actins they are wind round on one side and the filamentous actin they are on the other side so it forms a double helix structure so you are enabled to identify now the two actins the globular actins and the filamentous actins and they form the double helix structure the intermediate filaments the intermediate filaments they are not made up of a single protein they are made up of the various proteins that includes the keratin the desmin and the vimentins now all these type of the proteins may not be present in a single cell they are present very in various types they are present according to the need and the requirement of the cell uh, where it is located so it is composed of the two anti parallel dimers of uh, any type of the proteins now you can see that these intermediate filaments they can exist as the monomers or the dimers or they can form the tetramers of any type of the proteins which includes the keratin the desmin or the vimentin the functions of the intermediate filament is that they provide the mechanical support for the plasma membrane where it comes into contact with the other cells like it forms the cell junctions or where it comes into contact with the extracellular matrix so intermediate filaments they do not participate in the motility unlike the uh, this um, uh, microfilaments or the actin filaments which takes part in the motility but the intermediate filaments they forms the mechanical support and they anchors the cell to the extracellular matrix but they do not participate in the cell motility now the microtubules the microtubules they are the thickest fibers and they are hollow rods about 25 micron in diameter they are made up of the globular proteins which are called the tubulin proteins and they have a uh, capacity to grow or shrink as more tubulin molecules they are added or removed from it so they can form the various lengths of the rods of the microtubules uh, but the diameter it remains the 25 micro microns but the length may change from few uh, microns to large diameters now you can see here the, <coughs> the heterodimers of the tubulin proteins so there are two type of the dimers that is the alpha tubulin and the beta tubulin now these alpha tubulin and the beta tubulins they wind round to make the hollow tubule tubes of the microtubules so they uh, there is an arrangement of a helix to form the 13 vertical filaments around a hollow core so there are inside there are no microtubules but there outside there are the vertical filaments of 13 vertical filaments of the tubulin dimers that is the alpha tubulin and the beta tubulin now this heterodimers that is the alpha and the beta tubulins they are they have a plus and and a negative end that is from one end they can be attached and from the other end they can be detached so they can make a various lengths of the microtubules now you can see that we been side if we there is a cross section of the microtubule so there is a hollow uh, the cylinder like or a pipe like or a rod cylinder uh, hollow cylinder like uh, tube and there are 13 sub units of this microtubules the tubulin dimers so this you can see that there are alpha tubulin and the beta tubulin and there is the uh, one end there is the plus end that is the uh, polymerization is taking place at uh, one end there are a, a addition of the tubulin dimers 
and while the other end is the minus end or the deep polymerization of the tubulin dimers occurs at the other end. So microtubules, they basically participate in the intracellular transport of the organelles and the vesicles. And you can see here, this is a diagrammatic representation that how the vesicles which are uh, uh, carry, uh, carrying the protein uh, molecules for the cytosol functions or for the extracellular transport, they are uh, attached to this microtubules and this is a uh, requires the lot of the energy so they are carried or transported from the cytoplasm to the, the towards the cell membrane and they are exported outside and also they are involved in the intracellular transport of the organelles or the uh, or the extracellular transport now microtubules they are the central structures which supports the cilia and the flagella and which are the locomotive appendages of the cell so the microtubules are the basic structural unit of the cilia also and the flagella also Now we'll discuss the structure of a cilia, which is a very important structure. So cilia, they are minute hair-like organelles. They are identical in the structure to the flagella, and they line the surfaces of the certain cells and beat in a rhythmic wave-like fashion, providing the locomotion to the protozoan and also the liquids along the internal epithelial tissues in the animals. Now you can see here, this is the electron microscopic appearance of the hair-like projections of the cilia and they are forming the various structures in the different protozoan. Now cilia in the humans, they are very important structure as they lines the epithelia of the respiratory tract and also the uterine tubes and uh, they are uh, perform various important functions. So they beat in a rhythmic fashion to spread the mucus in the respiratory tract and also to entrap the dust particles and the foreign particles. So they play a very important role in the human body. So this is a structure of a cilia, which has a spoke, radial spoke or a spoke wheel appearance, and we call it a 9 plus 2 appearance. So you can see here that uh, in the outer ring, it has the nine subunits of the microtubules, and inside there is no hollow core like the microtubules. There is a, a central microtubules, the two central microtubules and it is enclosed in an outer sheath and there are there is also an inner sheath the central microtubules they are also enclosed in the inner uh, central sheath now, this is a transfer section of the cilia showing you the structure of the cilia and we call it a 9 plus 2 appearance that is there is a 9 arrangement of the microtubules in the outer ring and there are central microtubules two central microtubules which are enclosed in the central sheath now the central sheath or a central microtubules they are attached to the outer ring of the nine uh, doublet microtubules by the uh, filaments or the fibers which are called the radial spokes and then each of the microtubules or the doublets they are attached to the next uh, doublet of the microtubule with another uh, link of the proteins that is called the nexon link right so you can see that all the doublets of the microtubules they are attached to each other by the linking proteins which is the nexin uh, protein so the central uh, core of the uh, microtubules or the central microtubules they are enclosed by a central sheath and they have enclosed an, inside an, uh, their cytoplasm which is called the exonem and they are attached to the outer ring of the doublet microtubules with the radial spokes 
Now this, uh, each of the uh, doublet microtubules, for example, if this is A and B, so one of the microtubule has the structures which are called the dynein arms. Now this basically, the dynein arms, they are the basic uh, structure which helps the uh, movement of the cilia. So these dynein arms, lay, this is like the uh, steering of a car. And these dynein arms, they are moved on one side so that all the microtubules, they will move on the same side and the cilia will move in the same direction and all the cilia, they will move in a rhythmic fashion. So if, for example, the cilia has to move to the left side, so the dynein arms, they will be moved to the left side and all the cilia, they will be changed their direction to the left and similarly to the right. So these dynein arms, they are the basic unit which helps the motility of the cilia or moving the directions of the cilia. So if the dynein arms which are the proteins and they are defective and congenitally absent, the cilia will be immotile. So you can identify the structure, you can draw and label the structure of the transfer section of the cilia, which is very important. And in the later uh, lectures, we will discuss the uh, uh, other structures which are formed from the microtubules like the centrioles and the basal body and we'll compare the structure of all these uh, cilia, microtubules, uh, cilia and the centrioles and the uh, spherocilia. So, I hope you have understood this uh, structure of the uh, cilia. Thank you.